Hello, 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 everyone. It's Kim from KandarP here. And today I would like to show you some of the ways that I am frugal when it comes to doing art and not having to buy very expensive art supplies. Some of us are on fixed budgets. Some of us don't know if we're going to enjoy doing the craft. It's just sometimes you just have to use what you have on hand. So what I like to do is use stuff that I have on hand. Today, it is currently minus 6 Celsius, which with a wind chill factor of minus 12 in southeastern Manitoba, which means in Fahrenheit, it is 21 degrees and then 10 with the wind chill factor. We're getting warmer, it's true. Um, I'm sure that we're still going to have another bit of winter coming up with us. It's just the way it is. So I was asked by Anne. Hi, Anne. I was asked by Anne, who's now here, if I could do a bit of a write-up on making um, the way I do my cheap craft supplies and what I use instead of things like distress inks and the ink sprays and that kind of thing. So I did a write-up for her. And it was posted in PM Artist Studios group. And I said I would do it live to demonstrate how I use these things and how I do them. So here we are doing the live. So the first thing I really talked about is how people use distress inks for edging pieces of paper. A lot of times we want to make something look old so hey Barbara oh I'm glad you're looking forward to this I'm I'm really um hoping that it's going to be everything everybody hoped for so I was just saying you know giving our weather <laughs> report it's a beautiful sunshiny day and I'm hiding in the basement but that's okay um I gave a bit of an introduction about putting this in. Um, that's okay. I can't type well at most days. In PM Artist Studios, I did write up on how I make cheaper craft supplies. So many people use the Distress Inks by Tim Holtz. Don't get me wrong. It's a... Oh, you went for a walk. I'm so jealous. I could have gone for a walk this morning, I suppose, but I went grocery shopping. I figured that was enough. <laughs> and then I had to prepare because then I because I remembered I said that I need muck water because I use muck water, which is, you know, you rinse your paintbrush and you get muck water. I use that for doing some distressing and edging a lot of times. And of course, I remembered... You haven't painted in a very long time, Kim. So you better go down and make some muck water. So at 11.30 this morning, I decided I would whip off some really quick little paintings just so that <laughs> I'll just add them to my Kim Bits pile. I'll tuck them in a journal that I'm making um, just so that I could have some muck water. I figured doing some flowers was fast, simple, and uh, gives me a, a interesting green. And I know that when people edge their pages and things, they like to use a brown. So I am going to show you what it's like using a brown paint. And I'm sure by then our muck water will have a totally different color as well. So when I edge, I do it three different ways depending on, oh, thanks, Anne. I used to teach folk art painting and that's one of my <laughs> remembrances is, is how, you know, the, the little folk art roses. Fast, simple, done for me. Um, I can do it from memory, which is a, a nice thing. So the three ways that I do it is I will take a child's water colored marker and I will scribble on a piece of plastic or I use a Folgers liner that 
lid kind of thing, the seal. So I, I just scribble a bit on the plastic. Then I will take a cotton swab Q-tip, dip it in some water, water this down. And this gives a really nice faint edge. Yeah, you have to wait for it to dry compared to using the dry Tim Holtz inks and stuff, but that's okay. I have time. I'm retired. And this way, I don't have to have every color under the sun. So you can see it gives just a very, very faint edge. Of course, if I added more green or if I did it in a darker color, let's do this turquoise. Again, just water-based markers. A little bit of water and a Q-tip or a cotton swab, whichever you want to call it. And you can just run it along the edge. Of course, orange is a hard one to see on. Let's grab a piece of white. Okay, let's do this piece of white. And it gives you a nice bluish tinted edge. So that's one way I do my edging on in my journals and things. And of course, you know, the more you add, the darker it goes. If you want it to bleed a little bit, you just, you know, a little bit of water and, and you spread it out so that it runs just a little bit so it doesn't have such a straight edge. I don't know how well you can see that. Tell me, can you see that? Yeah, one of those things with the cotton balls on the end. So does that show up? Can you see that enough? I hope so. So as I say, you know, you can go over it a couple of times. Again, you need to wait for it to dry. You can wave it if you've got a heat gun or something, you can do that. So that's one way I do it. Another way I do it is I'll take a little bit of paint this is just Artist Loft Burnt Sienna. Artist Loft Burnt Sienna. Is that upside down for you? It's upside down for me in my screen. How's that? Is that any better? Okay. So <laughs> just a, a tiny bit of paint. You really don't need much. That's going to be oodles. If you're using like a craft smart paint, it's thinner. You need less water. So I'm just going to use the other side. You know what? First, I'm going to use a brush and water it down a bit. Because you want it to be quite thin and runny, almost like an ink. So again, with a cotton swab, make sure it's really a nice thin. And again, you just go along the edge. So you can use any colored paint you like. This works great for edging. Again, you have to wait for it to dry. But we've all got so many paints between pores and gel printing and painting and what we do. I always have more paint than anything else. Well, I can't say that. You haven't seen my rooms. But anyway. This, this works really, really good with a cotton swab. Or I have this wonderful little handle with a felt bottom. These are just one of those little floor protector things. The handle my husband turned for me. He does a lot of woodworking. So I'll just dip that in the water, get it a little bit wet into the paint. And then you can just do it this way like everybody else does it. It will be not as dark. To, you know, you use what you have on hand. So, you know, these little felt things work good on a bottom of a wooden spool because um, you can just glue it on. The newer spools of thread have a bit of a dip. Have you ever dipped the... Yes, I have dipped it into the paint. Okay, the other thing I like to use is just a regular kitchen sponge. Again, get it a little bit wet into the paint. 
And the same thing is a different piece of paper. Again, just run it over the edge. The thing with the sponge, though, is you get the little hairlines sometimes that it just, I don't know if you can see it. But that's okay. It depends on how you want it to look. But yes, I have dipped it into um, the paint. Again, I water it down really good. I think she meant a cut edge. And was chicken meant to be cut? I'm assuming, Barbara, that she meant a cut edge of paper. But as I say, you know, I just use paint. You can get whatever color you want. You can darken it, lighten it. And to me, it, it antiques the page just as well. Um, let's see, do I have a coffee dyed piece of something close by? And I can show you what it looks on coffee dyed paper or even brown paper. What have I got? What have I got? Nothing right here, of course. Okay, even on this brown paper. So you just dip it in the water, dip it in the paint, and it gets the brown, and it still gives you a nice edge. <laughs> you don't know where the chick came from. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross my screen? Okay, so that's... The, the ways I like to edge, I find a paint, that a color that I want to use, and I do this. Does that make sense to you guys? Anyway, I like, <laughs> you don't have a chicken brain. I like the fact that I can then edge my paper to match whatever I'm working on. If I'm doing a journal and it's all in pinks, I'll have the same shade pink. And like I say, it, it, you know, right now it's, it's dry. How long ago did I do that? Well, this one's wet, but you know, for the most part, they're dry. I can handle them. They don't smudge. I know I didn't in the write-up, and I didn't talk about um, spray alcohol inks. What I do is I take rubbing alcohol, I buy a bottle of rubbing alcohol, and then when my printer says you need new ink and it doesn't print anymore, I take the cartridge and I dump it in a jar with the rubbing alcohol, and I get my own alcohol ink sprays. I, I don't know if it's thinner than... I've never used an alcohol ink spray, so I don't know what they're supposed to look like. But I thought it would be an interesting thing. So even though your printer says there's no ink left, if you dump the, the cartridge in a pot of rubbing alcohol, it, it dyes the, the rubbing alcohol. You can do that also with felt markers and things as well. So anyway, you this is just straight rubbing alcohol, um, leftover or used ink cartridge, and one of the little spray bottles that you can buy at Dollarama or whatever. And it does spray. I have, I've tried it through a stencil. Um, I'm not very happy with the effect. I find that bleeds too much through the stencil so it's not as sharp yeah and you can get great colors that way too right barb but yeah i you know because i have a printer i use my printer inks so 
I mean, rubbing alcohol isn't that expensive. And I think for the bottle of rubbing alcohol, and I bought, it, it was almost like a quart, a liter. It was $18. And I don't think that you could get two different colored inks for $18. But that's just me. I have to be cheap. But yeah, when that dries, you get a really nice spritz effect. Okay, on to the making stamp pads. When I was teaching crafts, working with people with varying abilities, they were very, very hard on stamp pads. So I had to come up with a way. Hey, how are you, Mariah? I had to come up with a way to make stamp pads that we could reuse, etc. So the best one that I found is just regular craft felt. I have cut circles out of my craft felt. These are left over from when I was teaching in the early 2000s. So I've got rounds of craft felt. And they fit nicely inside these sour cream or ice cream or yogurt lids. So what I do is I take a blob of paint. Let's use... Let's use a brown. Yeah, I try to be environmentally conscious. <laughs> so again, I'm just using the Artist Loft Burnt Umber. And I'm going to put a blob down. And that's a hefty size blob, so that should go far away. It's quite thick when it's a tube paint. So I'm just going to give it a little spritz with some water. And I'm also going to spritz the felt pad with some water. You don't want it sopping, but you do want it damp. So then you just put it on top of your paint. And you get mucky fingers if you do it that way. But if you use like a card... So if I used more paint, it would fill the whole thing. If I used a bit more water, it makes it a little bit runnier. And then you might not get as crisp an effect. But I will show you both ways. So I just have a piece of linoleum from when my husband was doing the flooring upstairs. We had a whole bunch left. So I just cut it into various things so that I could have stamps. I'm just going to take a piece of white copy paper, if I can pick it up. And again, this way you can have any color that you want. And if you're using a bigger stamp, of course, you do a bit bigger area. So you dip it on there like you would a regular stamp pad. If you can see... It's a little bit wet, so it might smear a bit. It might not. You never know. And then you can stamp. The nice thing about this is the felt is reusable. We've always got paint around. You can mix your colors to get exactly what you want. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful way to have stamps and things, stamp pads in every color without spending a whole lot of money. What tweaked Anne onto this was I was talking about, I was watching Seven Plaza and she was doing some really cute little art things and she was stamping them all and they were cute and I didn't have a stamp pad that worked. Um, 
So I use this. This has block printing ink on it. I have had this tube since I can't. I don't know if I'm upside down. Am I upside down? Can you read that? This block printing ink I have had since the 1980s, late 1980s, early 1990s. It's still usable. I never did do any linoleum printing with it. Um, I didn't, wasn't into carving or anything at that time, but <laughs> I worked in an art and supply store, so I bought a lot of supplies that I never used really. Now I'm doing more prints. I am using this. So what I did was I took a little container and I folded up a piece of paper towel on the bottom. I put the ink on it, add a little bit of water, and then I put just a piece of sponge on it. And the sponge I had was, I guess that's about half an inch thick. And I had used it when I was reupholstering my kitchen chairs. So I soaked that in the ink. And that's what I was using for stamping. And I was using, um, like, this, this stamp is just fun foam. And right now it's pretty wet because I had it sitting, so I added a bit of water to it. But when I was doing it, it wasn't quite as wet. And I got some really cute little marks made with it. So that's another way to do it. You can use foam or you could use felt. I like the felt because you can get a deeper, richer color. This way, I guess if I added more ink, I would get a richer color and it wouldn't be um, as wet and it would be much crisper. So in, in using all this stuff, like the homemade stamps and things, I can make marks. Actually, I've, I've used this technique and I've used it on my gel plate so that I have, you know, instead of using a stencil or whatever, I will just put a few of these kind of marks on randomly. And they seem to lift okay. They might not pull exactly, but then you get the artifacts on your prints. Okay, so that's fun foam. That's linoleum. This one is a wood stamp my husband turned for me. Again, put it in. Make sure it's covered. This could be a little bit wetter. It's, it's not, or I could have used more paint. But for demonstration purposes, I'll be frugal. <laughs> Again, you know, you, you get, it's not super crisp, but it's got character. And then, of course, if you use an acrylic stamp, as I said, with the acrylic stamps, um, you want to be pretty careful about cleaning them so that it, it doesn't build up in the nooks and crannies, the paint. Um, I have no idea where I got these stamps, probably Dollarama because that's pretty much the only place I buy stamps. So I'm just going to use this little flower. I do have a stamping block someplace, but I have no clue where it is. Didn't quite get it all. Yeah, coffee crisp, yes. Is 
And if you have a stamp, that's not too bad. It's kind of fun. That's the uh, second generation print. But if you're doing stamping, you've got a stamp that doesn't print clearly. It's worn out just a little bit. If you take a piece of fun foam and you put it underneath so it's a softer surface, when you stamp, the softer surface gives you a better print. So that's pretty much my tips and tricks for things today. Um, I did want to show you something. I had been watching Louise Heinzel. Heinzel? She has a, chat, a channel. And she did these jazz up your scrap things. So I have, this is the third time I'm doing this. I get a lot of paper scraps because of the journals and things I make. I'm trying to find an empty space here. So then I take the scraps and I do little clusters. And I, and I like doing them on brown paper because it just it's got that sound, right? I like the sound. So these scraps... I haven't coffee dyed them or anything. I have poured muck water over them. Yeah, they stick together a little bit, but it's okay. They will come apart. Yeah, you'll get some. But I mean, instead of coffee dyeing, this is muck water. And I just love having muck water in different colors. And so I just drizzle it on top and stir it up. I've spritzed it with, um, I had been using some food coloring in water. So I got had that in a spray bottle earlier and I spritzed it with some uh, pink food coloring. When I was doing these paintings, I had a little bit of green paint left on my palette. So I watered it down and I just took the palette and turned it upside down on top of this. And, and again, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Once you take them apart and you start using them, you have wonderful, fun scraps. This is how I do the brown papers a lot of times for my buildings. I'm not on camera, I'm sorry. Um, I, I do this kind of thing and... I use them on my buildings. So she also takes stamps. I will post the link to her video. I was going to do it before I started, but I didn't because I wasn't thinking. And, and she just takes a stamp and she'll just go like this. And it just makes marks. And it's fun. And then she turns them over. Does it again. And then when you pull these out, they've got a little bit of stamping. They've got a little bit of muck water. They've got very, very interesting for collage. She calls it jazz up your collage fodder. Thanks, Barbara. I don't know. You haven't, because you're not online. I don't think you saw the little buildings that I do. I do these um, a lot of times when I'm doing my brayering and stuff, I, I roll off on brown paper or I do this kind of thing with my brown papers. Brown paper underneath when I'm working. I'm going to just dump this in some water because I don't want it to get too, too the paint too too dry on it. Um, sorry. Squirrel. Lots of squirrels in my life. Okay. I will clean that better after. But 
I do these little buildings uh, out of brown paper and gel print cutoffs and markers. And then I use them in my journals. I call them Kimbits. They're, um, I, I make multitudes. Because I used to do so many craft shows and I sold at the museum in Steinbach and stuff, I'm used to mass making things. So a couple of weeks ago, I went on a mad making binge with my buildings. So then I, I'll do, you know, a couple of buildings together and put them on another piece of paper and um, use them as tucks or pockets. How do I get those mucked pieces to lie straight on your substrate in the example you showed us? Oh, the one in the bin that I was playing with? If you just take a little bit of water and, and run it down, either that or I will put it under books um, way down. Or in this case, I just glued them down. I use wet glue as a rule. I don't often use glue sticks. Although I did oh, off screen, Kim. Um, I do use glue sticks. But, well, I just started because I'm doing a couple of journals for Defy. And so I wanted to glue the magazine pages together. These ones look so smooth. Hmm. I don't know. I, because they have been through that mucky process. Maybe because when I, I work with them, I'm constantly smoothing them down. And, well, that one's not brown paper. Okay, these ones, I guess, are more roller. Um, they're not brayer offs as such. They're just painty papers. I've got to have one that's a... I guess I used all those ones up. But, um, yeah, I just... They will lie flat if you... <laughs> you iron a great deal of your papers... I've ironed papers too, um, but I have to be in the right frame of mind to iron. <laughs> iron is a four-letter word, but really I only iron papers and fabrics if I'm working on a quilt. My sister still irons all her clothes on laundry day. So those ones, yes, are from those mucky papers. But the thing when I do those those bunches of scraps, I use them pretty fast. Like doing these, I have a bin of stuff that I've, you know, I've got bins, mushroom bins, lots of mushroom bins, you know, and then you spatter them, you, you just, these ones are a little bit more wonky. But again, I've already glued these down onto backings. Oh, that's a great thing to do while watching replays and things. But I, I love these little scrap bits. I, I just... And then you can doodle on them. Um, I slow stitched on some of them. These ones are slow stitched on. Little piece of ribbon with some slow stitching. Mariah, I like the piddly little stuff too. So 
that's pretty much it. I don't have, you know, unless you have questions or you'd like to see me do something different with these things. Sorry, just trying to clean this stamp. Was it, did I explain well enough? Is it simple enough? See, even still, you, you can't get all the paint out. You're welcome, Anne. I just like to save money. You know, my thing is, is that I have been crafting since I was nine years old and I'm 64. So I started with crocheting and I've done needlepoint and cross stitch and macrame and knitting and embroidery and bargello and cruel. And then I started doing um, quilting and sewing and that evolved into <laughs> my dad gave my husband some carving tools and my husband says you have to try these so then i started wood carving and i play with just about everything so i have craft supplies from a bazillion and one different hobbies and then i taught kids crafts and i did the kids craft tents at local um, town fairs, that kind of thing. So I was, you know, working with 60 plus kids. So I'd end up with whatever we were making, the leftovers from that. And now I have all this stuff that my kids roll their eyes at and say, mom, you have to get rid of it while I'm working as hard as I can. Well, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to do that. This uh, muck water, I'm going to be pouring over those scraps. Unless I do a little bit more painting. But I mean, even this, I will take this. And go like this. Don't want to waste anything. And yeah, I get covered in paint. So basically, I have to play, and I have to play every day. I think I'm going to start doing, um, I've been thinking about the perfect time for doing lives, and I think I'm going to do it at 1245, and starting next week, I'm going to do it, I'm going to try and do it once a day next week, because I'm doing... Uh, finish it February. So I have a bazillion one things that I would like to get finished. So I'll be doing prompts and various other things. Do I still have paint coming off? I do. All right. <laughs> you love the container scrap? Yeah. Um, I normally have them on a piece of brown paper in the middle of the floor, but my camera is affixed, so I couldn't take it to the camera, so I had to bring the camera, or I couldn't take the camera to them, so. But I think that on Tuesday, I'll, I'll pour some more stuff over this and spritz it, and... Tuesday at 12.45, I will make these into something fun if you want to come and see what I do with these. But really, did you know that even with paper, if you take your scissors, 
you can curl it. I've done some fun bird kind of sculptures out of paper and I've used lots of like curled. Oh, you can't see me. I was off screen. So it, it depends on what I'm working on. But even construction paper, you can curl. This one's a little wider, so it's not going to be as tight a curl. Did I do that on screen? One more on screen, Kim. This is just a piece of brown um, paper. I get it in a roll, like postal paper, on screen. It's like curling ribbon. That's true, Barbara. And there are so many wonderful people on that you're always going, uh, I'm always going to be competing with someone. I haven't learned yet how to do, I've got a new computer. So the program that I used to use where I could do a video and then upload it, I don't have that program any longer. So I'm not sure how to pre-record something. It's on my to-do list for learning. Um, so that I can do process videos, like I, I would consider this kind of a process video. So, yeah, I just, like, I'm thinking maybe I'll do a doll with funky curled paper hair. I don't know, you know, it's... Can use them on decorations on packages instead of buying curling ribbon. Limited by your imagination. And like I posted that my new catchphrase is going to be craft ideas. You can't have just one. What would you do with a bin of scraps like this? If you were going to use it in a collage or something. How about woven paper? I do a lot of paper weaving too and, and use it. I use strips on... Um, Journal cards, I use, when I do inches or twinchies, it's nice to have just little bits that I can chop up and add to, you know. Oh, these are really nice and stuck, but that's okay. When you pull them apart and you get that little bit of extra, it gives texture, right? Thoughts, tips, ideas. Oh, you're welcome, Barbara. You know, one day we should get together and do a, have a play date. I think that would be kind of fun. All right, then I am going to sign off. It's been 44 minutes. That would be good this summer. We can try it. Even if we get together in a park and do some sketching or something, it'd be nice to meet face to face. All right. Thanks for watching. If you're, you know, watching it in a replay, thanks for watching. Take care, and next week I will be live at Monday, 12.45. I like the thing, live at 12.45. So I will see you on Monday, hopefully, and 
each day for the rest of the week. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye.